stamps here representing some of the members of the, um, the, the, the prison. This is, says the Irish Prison Service College. The price of a stamp is 68 cent. Now, I looked at that and I was like, does it cost 68 cent to post a letter? It costs a euro. How behind the times am I? Anyway, we're here to find out much more important things today. Uh, our second speaker today on the stage here at Jobs Expo from Irish Prison Service, absolutely delighted to have not only a woman, our first person in uniform today uh, from the Irish Prison Service, it's the Assistant Chief Officer, Sylvia Flynn. And we did have a bit of a chat earlier about some very interesting aspects of the story. But I know you're going to talk a bit about the training. So if you want to uh, come over and, and, uh, and talk here so that people can hear you. I'm fascinating. I know you have a stand uh, here in Crow Park as well. Correct, so yeah. So if, if you do have questions, you can go there afterwards. But we might even have time at the end for a little bit of a QA. and a But for now, can we give her a lovely warm round of applause? And then we can give you your hands. Good afternoon, folks. Um, you're all very welcome here. Um, I'm just basically going to go through a PowerPoint here with you and again if there is any questions if I can answer them I'll answer them here if I can't if you come down to the stand to us because I have a member of our HQ department there as well and we'll try and answer your questions and if we can't we will take your details and we'll send on the answers to you I think that's the best I can do for today um, as I said I'm assistant chief officer Sylvia Flynn I've been in the prison service for almost 15 years I've worked in the female prison the male prison and now I'm in based in Port Leash in the recruitment training where we recruit all staff that come through recruitment now will come through us in the college. So you're all very welcome. We've done that one. The content of this today is just basically about the Irish Prison Service, the role of the prison officer, a typical day in the prison officer and the training involved. Now just to mention as well, we also have clerical prison officers that we're looking for at the moment. This is based on recruit prison officers. Clerical staff as well, if, if you're interested in the clerical side of the prison service, again, it's through public jobs, the same as prison officers. You apply for the job in public jobs. It's a nationwide campaign. We get a panel then from public appointments, and we try and facilitate people living near, if they're from Cork, we try and facilitate them in Cork prison, likewise in Limerick or Dublin. So if, you've any if you want any further information about the clerical, it won't be in this briefing here, but it will be at the stand, okay? Any, any questions and answers? What do the prison service do? What's our mission? Our mission as staff there is to provide safe and secure custody, the dignity and care and rehabilitation to prisoners for safer communities. And our vision is a safer community through excellence in a prison service built on respect and human dignity. Basically, this means the revolving door system. For years, prisoners have come in, gone through the system, done their time, come back out, and no benefit. What we're trying to achieve is, if somebody is put into custody, is to try and point them in the right directions facilities, schools, workshops, so that they can upskill themselves to stop them coming back in through the prison service and try and make a better living for themselves. That's just basically the Irish Prison Service Estate. It's just to show you, some people might know of all the prisons we have and where they're based. So if you are from down the country and you don't realise there's a prison near you, we have open centres in Lochan and we have an open centre in Shelton Abbey. Open centres are basically where the prisoners progress through the prison service and go to the open centre, coming towards the end of their time. They can go out and work all day. They would basically be in the open centre. They can leave at 9 o'clock in the morning, go out to a job, come back. That is how the open centres work. They're um, a much, much more open, brighter facility and it's just about reintegrating people back into the community. You could have somebody locked up for 30 years, and I do recall somebody in this situation when I first joined the job, there were 30 years or more in prison. They'd never seen a mobile phone, they'd never seen the euro at the time when I joined, and then there was no reintegration back into society for them. They were just, yeah, thanks, you've done your time, and off you go, but they didn't know how to adapt. He stood outside a shop, he told me, because he ended up coming back into prison because he didn't know how to adapt outside. He felt safer in prison, and it was basically... He stood in front of a door of a shop for about 20 minutes one day. He forgot how to open a door. He was so used to having people open a door for him. Little things like that that we take for granted every day because we go in and out doors. When you're in prison in custody, people have to open doors and gates for you. You're told when you're going to go to workshops. You're told when to have your breakfast. But it's not like you're going to have your breakfast. It's These are all routine, and we have to have routine, and that provides safer custody for everybody. So you're told when you're eating. You're told when it's time for lock-up. And you have to remember, at lock-up, you're put back into a cell at half seven in the evening. You remain in that cell until eight o'clock the following morning. So if you get a little peckish during the night, you can't run off to McDonald's, can't run off to the shops to get something, or downstairs for a grand cold glass of water out of the fridge. You know, it's the little things that you need. They, we appreciate that they don't have when they're locked up in custody. There are a lot of challenges in the role of a prison officer. Does anyone here want to comment and tell me what challenges you might think 
You'd face in the role. You're all very quiet. No one. Personal safety, yep, yeah, that's a big one. Nobody else? I think how to deal with them with their different... Communicating, yeah. yep. Basically, we'll go through some here. So we have stress levels and we have time here. There's personal stress, your own stress, that you might bring from home, but you have to leave it at the gate. People forget that. We all have lives too. We go home, we have the kids, we have the routines, we have getting them from A to B to matches, lunches, the dogs, the husbands, the wives. You know, we've the personal stress. You're searched every day. You know, like when you go through the airport and you're searching the system, prison officers are searched every day. Some people can find this to be a very claustrophobic environment, uncomfortable, but you must get used to these things. You're searched on a daily basis. 12-hour shifts, unsociable hours, every second weekend, festival occasions. Basically, you work, say, your first week, you work Monday, Tuesday, you're off Wednesday, Thursday, you're in Friday, Saturday, Sunday, vice versa the next week, you're off Monday, Tuesday, in Wednesday, Thursday, off Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But then you have your own sociable hours, which is your overtime, your AH as we call it. That has to be taken into account as well. And everybody does that as well. Every second weekend, so you're missing maybe family occasions, football matches of kids, whatever the case may be. Festive occasions. We don't close, unfortunately, at Christmas and let everybody out and they can all come back in again. Staff end up working at Christmas. And it's hard on staff working Christmas because everything is based on seniority in our job. So if you have young kids, you may miss some Christmases. You may miss birthdays, Easter's, St. Patrick's Day, bank holidays. But it's done on a, it's done on a roster basis. So you, you won't do them all, but you will do some. Social media. The surgical removal of the phone from you, which I like to call it. I know we're all engrossed in our phones. I do it myself when I'm at home. Getting used to not having your phone. And we do that when you're in training. We actually don't allow your phones on you in training. They're left either in the room, if you're staying with us down in training, or in your car. And the reason for this is it's not just for you. It's getting your family used to not being able to contact you and how to contact you if there's an emergency. It's not just about keeping you tuned in in class and keeping you away from Facebook and all the different forums out there, but it's getting your, it's getting your friends and family used to you not being able to answer them straight away. So that's a big thing. And you'll, you'll have the phantom vibrations of the phone for about three weeks afterwards in your pocket thinking it's still going off when you're in the middle of the prison. The lack of appreciation for the role. Anti-heroic. It's not the Hollywood stereotypes we all see on the TVs. There is a lack of appreciation. We don't wear capes, but we do save lives. We do change lives. Okay, so there is a lack of appreciation for that role. We're not out in the front line. You know, you, you'll see guards out there doing their job. You'll see ambulances save lives. You'll see firemen save lives. Ours is done behind a 30-foot wall. You don't see it. So there is a lack of appreciation for it, but it is done. And we do stop fires as well. <laughs> We're everything behind the 30-foot the 30 wall. There's, those are the social isolations. Next, we have the requirement to contain your own emotional responses, such as shock, fear, and sadness. If something happens, if somebody dies in custody, I have witnessed it myself where somebody took their own life in custody. It is a, a shock to the system. There is a, a high, um, the emotions are all over the place. But you have to remember at the end of the day, it's somebody's either son, husband, father. You know, if you're in a men's prison or wife or daughter in a, in a female prison. It's not a prisoner, it's a person. And that's why we try and break the stigma that people think of the prison. It's all prisoners, they're people. The threat of assault. Most people will think of that one of themselves. I can personally say I've had, I've had threats of assault, I've been assaulted, I've had things happen to me, but I'm still in the job. I like my job. I'm not going to let one bad experience determine my career. And it is, a prison service can be a job or it can be a career for you. You can come in, you can clock in, you can do your 12-hour shift, sit on your landing, make sure everything's okay, do something, or you can come in and make something of yourself. You can upskill yourself. There are courses available to apply for. I know a colleague who went through Cambridge through the prison service. You know, it is there, and the facilities are there for you. You deal with challenging people, people suffering from addictions, mental health, and behavioral issues. There is people put into custody that shouldn't be in custody for mental health issues that need to go to other locations, but unfortunately they don't. You're not trained in that, but you do the best you can at the time. We do have other facilities in the prison where we have psychiatrists, doctors, nurses on, on site 24 hours, seven days a week. But it's not always the case when you're on the landing. They might not be there just at that time for you. So you are dealing with challenging stuff. Protecting and caring for people convicted of morally offensive crimes. Sex offenders. That would be the morally offensive crimes. People, anything to do with children, old people, and so on and so forth. 
but you have to keep your opinions to yourself. You are there for one reason and in a professional manner to do your job to provide safe and secure custody. Protecting and caring from people, and that was, sorry, that was the compassion and fatigue. Uncertainty over daily tasks. So your tasks could change on a daily basis. You could be a class officer, then all of a sudden you might need to be, there could be an escort to a hospital, there could be an escort to court. So you may, your role might change during the day, but you adapt to that role and your training will provide you with all the security for that. Your colleagues assaulted. One of your best friends could get assaulted. Yes, I've known people, and it is hard, and it's, it's hard on you, but it's also, prisoners do feel it as well, all right, because they do, I know that we have a rapport with people. If something happens to somebody in the service, prisoners are relieved and say, oh, is he okay, as well as the staff. You've been assaulted yourself, a death in custody, an investigation, if somebody makes a false allegation or, an invest, uh, or, an, or any, any allegation against you, you're under investigation. But once you follow the guidelines, procedures and protocols, you should have nothing to worry about. All right? Disturbances, riot situations, they do happen. They are very, very rare, I have to point out. We have specialised equipment in the prison service or a method of entries to deal with riot situations, to deal with any major incidents, and thankfully, we very, very rarely have to use them. So those are all the kind of the stress levels that you have within the job. This is one of my favourite pictures with the prison service because it, it is the jail, as they say, the prison, but it's also the men, it's a mental health facility. Our single greatest strength is our ability to communicate, engage and demonstrate humanity. Resilience, your own well-being and mental health. And I mean, that's everywhere now in schools and colleges and everything for well-being. The need for authentic, supportive interactions. Every contact counts, and I can't stress that enough. Every contact you have with a prisoner in the prison service counts. Whether it be a positive or a negative, it does have an impact. But we would hope it would be a positive. We have a, a next prisoner comes in to talk to recruits uh, in their training. And he went from the lowest of the low to selling nearly everything that his parents had owned to what he had owned for a heroin ad um, addiction. He then turned his life around and now he's doing a master's degree. So, and when I spoke to him one of the days, he said the reason he was able to do this is one officer had faith in him. The third picture there is down to the D Division in Mount Joy Prison. It's just to show you exactly what one of the landings looks like. We have grounds workers. We have an officer just walking up the landing, having a chat with a prisoner. That's a class officer, just every day you'll stand and have a chat. And then there's one of the yards there to show you. They have like uh, goal posts and stuff in the yards. There's phones in the yards so they can make their phone calls. It's a diverse, never revolving role of a prison officer. Again, we have workshops. That's one of our control room facilities there. You can see every officer would work in these areas. You don't have to be specialized to work in the likes of control room. You can be working there at any stage. Then the multidisciplinary meetings there, you would have staff, you would have probation officers, nurses coming together to check on prisoners, especially if they're looking for temporary release or if they're coming up for uh, parole. The role of the prison officer itself, you carry out secure duties, safe and secure custody. You're dealing with issues such as bullying, assaults, substance misuse and self-harm. Having an awareness of prisoners' needs, vulnerabilities and taking action. You encourage prisoners to deal with personal challenges through offending behaviour programmes and incentivised regimes. Incentivised regimes is a new um, campaign that was brought into the prison service. Basically, there's, there's three levels of um, IR. There's basic, standard, and enhanced. If you're complying with what we want from you as a person, as an individual, and this means engaging with the services. It's not just me telling you, you do this, this, and this. This is you either engaging in schools, engaging with teachers, engaging with psychologists, um, the doctors, everybody. You're on, you go up the next level to standard. You stand, start on standard, you go down to basic if you're not engaging, and you go up to enhanced. When you go up to ha enhanced, it increases things for you. It, there, it's like a reward system. You will get extra phone calls, you get extra visits, you get extra shop orders inside in the prison. And this, to me, this is great because you see people on the incentivized regimes, the families coming in to visit. The visiting area itself is different on the enhanced to the normal visits area. The normal visits area, you have screens if they're being caught trying to pass drugs or any sort of paraphernalia. You have the normal visits where you're sitting on one side, there's a desk in between and someone sitting on the other side. Or you have the enhanced, where it's like sitting in a coffee shop. You have a nice round table, you can hug your kids, you can talk to your partner. And I've seen people that come up to visit their partners in prison saying to them, if you go back down, I'm not coming up to visit you. Because they don't like sitting in in those other areas, the families coming up. 
So if they don't do what they're supposed to do in prison, the family say, I'm not coming back up here. I want to visit you in this nice area. I don't want to be visiting you there. So they put pressure on them, which helps us as well. The ISM then is, again, the ISM link in with prisoners to point them in the right direction on schools. Um, they do an interview with them when they're committed into prison. There's nothing more challenging, and I've seen it, than a grown man, for example, because me being a woman, I would say a grown man, being admitted into custody, shaking and crying because they have no idea where they are, what they're doing, what's going to happen because they've never been in prison before. It is quite a shock to look at somebody experience that. And the first thing you can do as a person is be a person and talk to them. Are you okay? Does your family know you're here? Because sometimes people are locked up and the families don't know where they are. And that's a reason they could be stressed and they could be upset. Does your family know you're here? If they don't, do you, want, do you need to make a phone call? Is, is there anything else? Do you need to, do you smoke? They might have been in a cell all day. They mightn't have been fed, you know, because they were going in and out to courts. They might have missed their meals. Little things like that will take the levels down, the stress levels down for somebody and makes them human and makes you human and your interaction will be much more positive. There's no point in you standing there going, right, you're in here, yeah, right, in there because they're, you're searched. When you come into custody, you're searched. Top half is searched first, then the bottom half. That's itself is a shock to the system for somebody who's come into prison. And it's not nice for you to do it as a human. I wasn't born to do that. I wasn't born to put cuffs on people. But I do it. It's my job. But it's how you do it. Upholding respect for prisoners, their property, rights and dignity while promoting these values among the prisoner population. Fostering appropriate relationships with prisoners. Ensuring standards of hygiene and clean cleanliness are maintained and recording and reporting. Again, all that there is just making sure they keep their own cell areas tidy. It's like being at home with the kids, keep your room tidy. You know, it's for their own well-being. If they're in a messy cell, their well-being might go down, their health might go down, you know, so you need to maintain. If you're running a particular landing or standing there, you're the class officer, you need to make sure everything's working, cells are clean, um, prisoners are acting appropriately, that um, they're being respectful to all the other prisoners on the landing and to you and to other colleagues. So it is, it is a, a diverse role. I enjoy working as a prison officer. As I said, I've had incidents happen to me, but I, I actually do love my role. I love working with people. People often think I'm mad for the work I do, but I absolutely love the role itself. It's not for everyone, and I'd be 100% on that one. We've had people in training who have completed their 12 weeks, passed all their assessments, and decided on the very last day it's not for me. We've had people on week two, week three of training decide it's not for them for obvious, for a multitude of reasons. But if it's not for you, you need to make that decision. There's no point in you staying in the job and being absolutely bitter for 30 years. It's a 30 year is what you have to do um, as a prison officer, but you have to retire at 60. The age limit is between 18 and 60. We had um, an officer last year who was recruited at 54. So he can only do six years. But he'll do six years, but he's happy doing the six years. But if you're not happy in the job, my advice to you is get out and look for something you're happy to do. Again, we went through the challenges, the emotional stressful situation, dealing with problems and conflicts, societies, hidden work, and the work pattern. There is training involved. There's just some pictures of some of the recruits in training. I know it's the Robocops and the red outfits, as we call them. You do learn CNR training, it's a control and restraint training, it's joint manipulation, it's not any sort of martial arts or anything, it's a joint manipulation that makes you sure that you're safe and the prisoner is safe and that you don't break any bones, you can't really hurt someone but you can restrain someone safely. But you, you learn all that in training. You also do a HCCC with Waterford Institute of Technology, it's a two year course and it's a higher certain custodial care, and you do that while you're actually working. You start semester one with us with the first 12 weeks. After that then, you'll do semester two and three. You will get time off in the prisons to go to college. You'll be given your days to go, so you're paid by us to go to college. We pay for this course for you. There's four phases. There's phase one is the six and six in Port Leash. Phase two is after nine months. Three is in a Dublin location and four. So semester one is in your first week, 12 weeks of training. You do three modules, foundation of practice, learning to learn, crisis and conflict management. Semester two is in the next 12 weeks in a central Dublin venue. It's normally, I think it's Marino is where we are at the moment. And you do your next three modules in custodial practice, equality, diversity and cultural and social awareness and a workplace reflective practice. Semester three then is in, again, in the Dublin venue. 
its contemporary healthcare issues, ethnic dimensions to custodial care, and induction to social psychology. And semester four is in the last 12 weeks, human rights, criminal justice, criminology, penology, and the work reflective practice project two. Some of the employment conditions. You'll enjoy the benefits of a civil service and associated employment. You'll be required to work flexible shifts. The rosters are prepared and made available to staff in advance. You'll actually know what you're working a year in advance, which is great. You can plan your life. I know it's for the next five years because you can just know how to work out the system. Um, you, in general, all, all recruit prison officers will be assigned a roster which will require attendance every second weekend, night duty, some public holidays and festive seasons. Prison officers are also required to work an additional hours band. It's a maximum of 364, 360 hours per annum, which will attract additional payments. Prison officers generally work from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. on a roster and a fortnight cycle. Just to highlight there, some recruit prison officers may be assigned an 8 to 5 roster on assignment to a prison. Just there may not be any spaces on the roster, so they assign them 8 to 5 until the positions become available. That last bit has slightly changed. Dublin-based competition, you could be based there up to five years. Because the last major recruitment we had was over 30 years ago, there's a lot of people due for retirement. So our transfer lists are really depleted. So if, if you joined the job 15 years ago, you would have been waiting 15, 20 years to get to Cork, Limerick, Castlery. Now we reckon recruit prison officers by next year will be going straight to Cork, Castlery and Limerick if they're looking for it. Now they could also be sent there if they're not looking for it. We have to keep that in mind. For years, it was always everybody went to Dublin and people were trying to get down the country. Now it's people are going to the country and might be trying to get back to Dublin, which it'll, it'll move a lot quicker anyway. So it's a good time to join the prison service if you're considering joining. The, we went through the rosters earlier on. They're um, Saturday, Sunday off, Monday, Tuesday in, Wednesday, Thursday off, and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And the same then on the following week, pattern changes, Saturday, Sunday on, Monday, Tuesday off, in Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Wednesday, Thursday, sorry, off Friday. Your annual leave, a recruit prison officer is entitled to 160 hours, which is 20 days per year. The arrangements which currently apply to the prison service in respect of unearned rest days and free days in lieu of public holidays will also apply. To ensure sufficient staffing is available, annual leave is granted, uh, granted in a structured and planned manner and it's a total of 216 hours per year. Different annual leave entitlements apply on appointment to prison officer grade. So your, your leave will go up as your grades go up as well. No routine leave is granted during 12 weeks of training. Um, we state that it's births, deaths and marriages only in training if you require leave. So if you have a holiday booked and say you get through the process and you're due to start in a group, just hypothetically you were due to start in November's group because we have another group starting in November. That group is full and we have a group in December for this year. Our recruitment then is starting in December, January for prison officers for next year. But if you had a holiday booked in December, I would say to you, hold off, don't go into the November group join the December group after your holiday, because you will not get leave for it. And it, again, we would we advise anyone, if there's a baby due, hold off. Because you, you, know, you will get time off, but you'll only get one day as the daddy if you want to go out and during training, and it's not nice, and we all want our partners at home with us when we have kids, so just keep those things in mind. If you have anything planned, or if there's a big family occasion coming up, there's a wedding out foreign, just keep those things in mind. So births, deaths, and marriages, we said only in training. We have a probation process. The probation is an extension of the selection process. It's for 12 months. You have no right of appeal in the first six weeks, but you have a recommendation re-probation at, month, at nine months, sorry, and you have a right of appeal. Suitability it is down to your behaviours associated with the competencies, behaviours associated with the values, performance, which is a PMDS, and conduct attendance. Information, your line manager reports down to the HR statistics, and it's reviewed at three months so after your 12 weeks training, your first probation is done. After six months, it's done in the prison, and again after nine months. The competencies that we look for are directing others, supporting others, conscientiousness, resilience, adaptability, information handling, and communication. And our values, the tips are teamwork, integrity, potential, safety, and support. So remember those, and if you look up our website as well, www.irishprisons.ie, you'll get all the information in relation to recruitment, those values and competencies will help you with your application forms. So basically what happens then is once your security clearance is done and you've all your other, you've your interview done, you've your physical test, your medical, then it's just down to offering you a contract. And then it's up to you to sit down, look at the contract carefully at home, decide if you're ready to join whatever group. Just to show you there on some of the groups, 
Um, our next group, as I said, is due in, in November. That group is full. In December, I think, is almost full. And then we will be recruiting December, January. So by the time that campaign ends, it will be by the end of January, February, I'd say, when they start giving us panels of people that have gone through the process. So then we will have 20 of January is the next group, 2nd of March, 27th of April, and 2nd of June. Basically, the first group there, guys, that is the first six weeks of training. Then you move to the second six weeks, which is in our West Dublin training facility. Anyone that did start or will be starting in the next two months will be off for Christmas. Because we'll be off for Christmas. <laughs> and they'll be down training with us. So you'll be off for Christmas if, if you were starting and you were joining in any of the groups there. As we said earlier on, earlier on, the role of the prison officer, we can't stress it enough, is not for everyone. It is a very challenging career. It's a very re rewarding career. And it's a varied career. So that's all I have to say on it from here. But if you have any questions, or if I can answer any of the questions, I'd gladly do that. I have to say, that was fascinating. It's a lot of information. I know yes, it's, yeah. I don't like doing PowerPoints too much because it's an information overload as well. It can be with all, but anything we talk about here today, we actually, you'll get this maybe twice again when you're starting here because we can't emphasize, we go over probation because we have to keep people informed like of the probation process so that you're fully clear on how long you're on probation, how long you're... And, and I know that you have Leisha who's in the middle of her training. Yes, Leisha's on the stand with us today. The other girl that's on the stand with me today in uniform, Leisha is on week six of her training. So if anyone wants to talk even about the training process, she's currently doing her training. She hasn't started any of her assessments yet. She's done some of her reflective practices and stuff, but she's, her big assessments haven't started yet. So she's all them ahead of her. And she's here today talking to people, which is great. You know, it's, it's confidence building as well for her. Yeah. So we probably have time for maybe one question before we wrap things up. Anyone want to throw a question or you're absolutely free to go down and chat uh, to the guys at the stall? No, maybe that's it then. They'll all be coming down to you after. I know, I see some faces that we chatted to earlier. Yeah. Yes, it's great. It's yeah. funny because while you were doing that, I was thinking, my stomach was in knots and I was thinking, I could not do that job. But I know there's probably people here whose stomachs are churning with excitement thinking, I could totally there is. do that job. And there's people who actually, even up to the day before they come down to us on the first six weeks of training, they're going, I nearly didn't come down. You know, my stomach was a knot. And what I would say to people like that is, give it a chance. If you're, if you want, if you're, you're thinking about it and you want to give it a chance, give it a chance in training. Because we do take you into the prisons during training. You will do um, practice experiential training in the prison while you're training with us. We will be leaving you in there with staff doing like night duties, but not all night. It'll be like from eight o'clock till 12 o'clock at night, maybe reserve periods as we call from five to eight. Right. So you get to work in the prison, you get to see what's happening before you make that final decision. And as I said, the website, Irish Prison Study, have a look at that, any more information. Even contact me, myself, Sylvia Flynn in the college, if you want more information. If you know somebody who's working in the service, they'd gladly bring you into a prison to show you around. Come down to the college, we'll show you around. You know, there's, there's no problem if you're really considering doing it and you're just a little bit nervous. You know, we all started at the beginning somewhere. I was nervous when I started. I cried for about two days. Yeah. <laughs> Going, what am I doing? You'll never get me here. Once it's on that side of the fence. Yeah, yeah, that's it. But I hope there's people here who are excited at the prospect of, of maybe hoping to join the prison services. Thank you so much. Not at all. Thank you very much for listening. Such an enlightening pre presentation today. Well, I'd love to give your lovely warm round of applause. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks a million.